Hey everybody, just getting you ready to work on your PowerPoint lecture notes for cell structure. Um, we are not going to be just taking like Cornell notes or bullet point notes for this. We're actually going to be using a graphic organizer. Um, so for this particular set of notes and assignment, you are going to go into your Google Classroom and you're going to click on the cell structure um, graphic organizer and it looks like this. So you've got um, different pictures of things that are already um, on the screen in the PowerPoint. And then as you're going, you're going to need to um, fill this in. Now, you are going to need to draw a picture of each one. And yes, you need to draw it. You can't copy and paste it. So my recommendation is that you draw um, on a piece of paper, take a picture, and then upload it into your graphic organizer. As a picture file. You can type the function and the special information. You don't have to handwrite that, but the picture does need to be hand drawn. So you need to take a picture and then um, find a way to copy and paste it into your cell organelles graphic organizer. Okay. All right. So that's what your organizer looks like. And we're going to get rid of that. Oops. Sorry. I just got rid of our actual PowerPoint. We're going to get the cell organizer um, right in that little corner right there. Um, cells are the basis of biology. They're the smallest unit of living things. And um, inside of cells, they have little bitty pieces that are even smaller. And each um, cell structure, or in this case, they're termed organelles. Each organelle has a specific function that they do for us. And so we're just going to go through, get a picture um, drawn, and the name and some information to help you differentiate and we'll be using that to practice. So let's get started. Uh, the first uh, cell structure part we're going to take a look at is the plasma membrane which is basically the outside edge of the cell, the cell membrane. Um, the function of the cell membrane is to basically keep things in and keep things out and also to let things in and out of the cell. So they regulate what enters and leaves. Um, special things about the cell membrane is that it's flexible. It's also called a fluid mosaic, which means all these little um, parts of the bilayer that the membrane proteins and um, all these different cytoskeleton and some of the membrane channels and things like that can move throughout the membrane. It's not like static and hard. It's fluid and things are able to move through that. Um, the cell membrane, membrane surrounds all eukaryotic cells. Um, so eukaryotic cells would be something that we have talked about prior to this, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. And it's described as a lipid bilayer, like a bubble. So it basically has two parts, one layer here and one layer here, made up of phospholipids. All right, the next part of the cell is the cytoplasm. It's basically like jelly that's inside of the cell membrane. So here in this picture, you can see the outside of the cell membrane and inside is the cytoplasm. It's the jelly-like fluid um, that suspends the organelles. What's special about the cytoplasm is that it's divided into two parts. You have the nucleus and the cytoplasm. So you have the nucleus here. Generally, it's in the center of the cell. And then all of the other organelles are suspended inside that jello. Think if you have a grandma that makes a jiggly jello mold with fruit inside of it, that the cytoplasm is like that jello, and then the organelles are suspended inside like those pieces of fruit. All right, your next organelle is the nucleus. The nucleus contains the genetic information or the DNA for the cell. This is basically where you become you. So the nucleus is where your genes live, your DNA live, your chromosomes are. Um, it's where you become who you are. So the nucleus is basically the control center. It has all the information necessary for life. Special about the nucleus is it's surrounded by a nuclear envelope that's like a cell membrane, but nuclear envelope is a membrane around the nucleus um, that helps th things to come in and to go out and keep certain things in and certain things out. So the nucleus is special. That nuclear envelope is its own special uh, membrane around it. 
All right, inside the nucleus, you have the nucleolus, right? So you have this picture here that shows your cell, you have your membrane on the outside, your cytoplasm here on the inside, and then you have your nucleus, and you have your nuclear envelope around the nucleus that we just talked about, and then inside the nucleus is the nucleolus, and this is where the DNA is and the ribosomes are assembled, and we'll talk a little bit about ribosomes in a minute. And special to that, you can see the nucleolus as a dark spot inside the nucleus. So when we look at cells under the microscope, you can see all the time it's stained purple, and right in the middle of the nucleus is the nucleolus, this purple dark spot. All right, next on the list are ribosomes. Now, ribosomes are super important. They are the factory of the cell. They basically are there to make proteins. And as we go further on in biology this year, you will notice that everything is about proteins. So the ribosomes are vital to the survival of an organism. Um, special to ribosomes, they um, basically allow cells to have the more ribosomes they have, the more protein they can make. So if you've got a cell that's full of ribosomes, then you've got more ribosomes. And in this case, you can see ribosomes, free ribosomes are um, throughout the cell. So you can see here inside the cell, in the cytoplasm, you've got a couple of these little bitty purple dots. Those are free ribosomes. And then you also have ribosomes attached to this organelle called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is rough because it has these ribosomes attached to it. If you've ever had um, a boat or seen a boat out in the ocean, the outside of the boat, when they get the barnacles stuck to it or on the piers at um, different beaches, you see those barnacles stuck to the outside. That's kind of what ribosomes do. They stick to the outside of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and so they make it seem or look rough. All right, the next one is the Golgi, better known as a Golgi apparatus. And the Golgi apparatus's job is to modify, sort, and package materials inside the cell. So basically, they take what the cell makes, and they put them into a package that is useful for the cell, and they sort them all out to get them ready for the cell to use. And in this case, we have an example of telling you it's like the UPS or the FedEx of the cell. Special to the Golgi is that they um, have proteins and lipids, which means proteins and fats. A lipid is another word for a fat. So the Golgi basically gets all of that packaged and sorted and ready to go inside of the cell. And here you can see it. There are these things that come off of the Golgi apparatus. They're called, um, a lot of the time they're called vesicles or Golgi bodies or things like that. And those are where we can send things out. All right, so the rough endoplasmic reticulum, I talked about it a minute ago when I was talking about ribosomes. It is attached to the nucleus. So we have the nucleus here. The rough ER is the organelle that is going to look like a maze. Like if you were to get a circle maze and have to follow through it, it looks like a maze attached to the nucleus with these little circles on it, right? So those are the ribosomes. So again, it's rough endoplasmic reticulum because it has those ribosomes attached to it. And then you have attached to that with no ribosomes, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The rough ER, we call it ER for short, or rough endoplasmic reticulum, is for making um, and transporting those proteins. So it basically gets the proteins from being made from the ribosomes and then it transports those within the cell. So it sends those proteins where they need to go. And it is rough again because it has ribosomes on its surface. So rough because it has those circle dots on it. Now the smooth ER, again we have this picture where you have the nucleus here, you've got the rough ER, it looks like a maze attached to the nucleus kind of, and then you've got the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And this is where we make fats. So we make and transport fats. So rough ER, it has ribosomes, ribosomes make proteins, so rough ER transports makes proteins. Smooth ER, this smooth stuff here, makes and transports fats in the cell that we need. And it's always located near the nucleus. So rough ER and smooth ER are always near the nucleus. All right, next one, lysosomes. So the lysosomes function is basically to break down and remove materials that are no longer needed. It's kind of like a stomach. 
but there's a lot of them in the cell. So inside of here, they've got different kinds of um, acids and other things that will break down those things that your cells don't need anymore. They clean up the cell. Um, and the special thing about them is if we don't have them, then it can cause disease or cell death. Just like if your stomach isn't breaking your food down properly, you can get sick. It's the same thing here for um, your cells. All right, on to microfilaments. These microfilaments are basically these structural support for the cell. So inside the cell, they can kind of hold things together. So they're made of, th basically, if you can see here, they're like thread, they're like little threads, like a net almost, and they're made out of protein and they provide support. That's their job. Um, and microfilaments can also be used um, for cell movement. So when we see uh, pond water, we're going to take a look at some virtual pond water. Um, and when we take a look at pond water, you can see that some cells do have these things called cilia or flagella that are like tails or little hairs that allow them to move. And those are made of microfilaments. So they're used for structure and in some, move, some cells are made for movement. Um, okay, so onto microtubules. Microtubules um, basically maintain cell shape. So they're hollow. So I kind of think of a straw. So a microtubule is like a straw, tube, straw. So kind of go together, um, and they maintain a cell shape. So they help the cell not to collapse on itself. And when you've got microfilaments and microtubules together, that is the cytoskeleton. So that's the structure of the cell. All right, if we're talking about plant cells, then we have an organelle called the chloroplast, which many of you have maybe remember, maybe from elementary school. Um, the job of the chloroplast is to capture light and convert it into chemical energy through the process of photosynthesis, basically to help plants make their own food, which obviously we can't do, unfortunately. Um, but that is what plants do. They're going to use that chloroplast to capture that sunlight energy and make it into um, chemical energy that the plant can then use. And they look like these green circles within the plant cell. And they're found in green parts only because they contain this stuff called chlorophyll that turns them green. All right, mitochondria. This may be one of the single most important organelles that you'll hear about because you'll hear about it constantly throughout the rest of the year. And a mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. If you don't remember anything else about the mitochondria, remember this sentence, the powerhouse of the cell. I can guarantee you it will be on an assessment or a test that you have. So mitochondria, powerhouse of the cell. Its job is basically to take your food and make it into stuff that the cell can use, which is this thing we call ATP. And we'll get more into that later. But it takes your food, turns it into energy. Special info about the mitochondria, all your cells have it. And cells that use a lot of energy have a lot of mitochondria. So if you were to look at a cell underneath the microscope, if you see a lot of mitochondria, that means that cell uses a ton of energy. If you only see a few, it means it's more of a lazy cell. It doesn't use a lot. All right, cell wall. This is in plant cells only. You need to know that, okay? So animal cells do not contain a cell wall. Human cells, animal cells, no cell wall. Plant cells contain a cell wall. That plant cell needs that for support, okay? And it helps to protect that plant cell. Special info, again, only in plant cells, and you get a few prokaryotes, which we talked about uh, before, um, but only plant cells contain the cell wall. All right, vacuole. This one is basically to store stuff. It's like the storage room, storage house of the cell. Um, and plants have big central vacuoles. Um, you can see it in the picture um, here. This is an, a plant cell. And they typically will have this big, clear, empty space, which is the vacuole for storage. And then animal cells have lots of, sometimes lots of little vacuoles or just one smaller one. But plants tend to have a big one. If you have a picture of cell on your test, you can always identify the plant cell by the large vacuole in the middle and then the cell wall on the outside. All right, and last one, centrioles. Okay, centrioles is your last organelle. Um, they basically help to organize cell division. So the centrioles are um, structures that will uh, essentially help the cell to split in half. Okay, so that's their job is to help 
divide um, that animal cell. And when we get into mitosis and some other things, we will take a closer look at that. Um, and they are, in special info, a type of microtubule. So again, those centrioles, they're organelles that help the cell to split and divide, and they're made of microtubules. All right, you should be at a point now where you have been able to um, get your graphic organizer, again, looks like this, all the way filled out in all these different things. Um, we are at a point where we should be able to get lots of good information about all of these things all the way from the start of the plasma or cell membrane down to centrioles. And um, you guys should have lots of good information at this point. So I hope that you got what you needed. Go back and make sure to pause and retype if you need anything. And remember those uh, drawings. Got to take a picture, upload it, copy and paste the correct picture into the correct spot on your Google Doc. All right. Great job, everyone. See ya.